Hello, I'm Chris Perkins, and I'm one of the principal game architects for Dungeons & Dragons. And this conversation is really aimed at dungeon masters who want to tackle the wild beyond the witchlight. And so I'm going to talk to you DM to DM about some of the things that we did in the adventure and why, and how that, in theory, will make DMing it easier. Something we have not done in a hardback 5th edition adventure yet is we're including a section for the first time which is about, hey DM, what type of information do you share with players and what type of information don't you share with players? And the reason why we're putting that in this adventure is because we realized to our horror some time ago that the Dungeon Master's Guide doesn't really do a good job of covering this topic. And it is often a topic among new DMs is it is not intuitive to them what is meant to be kept behind the screen and what sort of information is meant to be communicated to the players. And so in the introduction, we do go into greater detail about that kind of information. It's things like, do I tell the players what the monster's current hit points are? How do I describe how wounded a monster is, or should I even be describing how wounded a monster is? It's stuff on that level. And so that section was very important to include here. It doesn't go into exhaustive detail, but it, it gives a little bit of a lift up to new DMs and, and sets them on the right course as far as here's what you can feel comfortable sharing with your players in terms of information that is going on behind the scenes. And here's the kind of information you want to keep secret to build suspense, to keep the players in the dark as long as possible, that kind of thing. Now, structurally, the adventure also is a nice entry point for DMs because it starts in the Witchlight Carnival, which is just kind of a, a romper room that you can play in for a while before the adventure really sort of gets off in earnest in the Feywild. And so after a few sessions of running encounters with NPCs and locations in the carnival, a DM is likely to feel more prepared than to dive into the Feywild and, and take it from there. Now, when they get to Prismere, which is the much larger playground, the characters have a lot more room to sort of wander around and you have a lot more room to control the pacing because every piece of Prismere that they explore has its own sort of geography. And within that geography, there are random encounters that are meant to bring to light the sort of atmosphere of the Feywild or to put the characters in, in the right mood or to impart information that the characters might need. That's what these random encounters are designed for. The reason they're random is because you choose when they happen, and you can choose where they happen. And so they're drop-in encounters, really, that are not keyed to a particular place on the map and don't have to be used a particular time. So they're important, but they're liberating in a way that you can just use them when you want or if you want. Then there are what we call location-based encounters. These are keyed to the map of Prismere and to maps of locations within Prismere. They tend to be more involved and they tend to have bigger stakes or they impart more information to the characters, things like that. There's more to D&D than just the one pillar of combat that we can lean pretty heavily into the other pillars besides combat and still create a fun D&D experience. This book contains a ton of different tables uh, for DMs to use. There are there are uh, tables that show you know the effects from all sorts of different fey mishaps or what have you, but the one that you're probably going to use the most, it's a recurring thing, is the fey trinkets table. This has a ton of different entries on it. It has things you know from little charming baubles that characters might use to trade with fey denizens for things because they might not necessarily want gold pieces. So some of these things might be, you know, you might roll and you might get a candle that uh, when you light it, the fire itself, it roars like a bonfire. Or you might get a monocle that, you know, when you, when you look through it, the whole world looks green. But there are tons of these different little trinkets on, this, on these tables that you can use in all, in, in all manner of ways. One 
One thing that appeals to DMs obviously is new monsters to play with, and uh, being that this story focuses on the Feywild, it's not surprising that we have a number of new monsters scattered throughout the book, including uh, Briganox, who are these Fey miners whose souls actually live outside their bodies as little balls of light. And then there's a new creature, Glasswork Golem, which looks like a, a stained glass window come to life, basically. Then there's my favorites, Campestries, ambulatory singing mushrooms. They're about a few inches tall. They speak and sing in a nasal falsetto. So there are a number of uh, wackadoo creatures, including scary ones like the Jabberwock. Then there are a number of unique creatures as well. For instance, there are three guides that the characters will meet as they explore the realm of Prismere. These guides have unique appearances, unique art, and unique stat blocks to accompany them. Something we're trying out for the first time here is the idea of role-playing cards. And what they are is small playing card sized cards that have role-playing information for some of the key NPCs in the adventure that the characters are likely to interact with. Each NPC has a card. You can keep these cards behind your DM screen and reference them or sort them as you need to so that information is readily accessible to you. It makes it a little bit easier so that you don't have to do a lot of page flipping in the adventure to go back to that character to find out what they're like and what their notes are. Another tool that's included in this is a story tracker. There are a lot of things that happen early on in the adventure, perhaps in the carnival or at the outset, that might kind of, these are threads that might be picked up later in the adventure. And so we've included this story tracker to allow DM to have just very quick kind of sheet that show, just shows all of these elements in one place. And we know that DMs kind of keep their own note taking or many kind of do this, but this is also a tool for new DMs to show, hey, this is just, th these are good kind of DM practices. And it's just done in a very kind of neat way uh, at, the, at the end of the book. Uh, for DMs who uh, have their characters kind of running through the, uh, the Witchlight Carnival, have fun with it. It's okay to let the characters spend time there and in, in kind of play around there and, you know, to, being a kid in a candy store. Don't feel like you have to rush through this part of the story to get into the Feywild. This is meant to be kind of a playground and just lean into that. So running an adventure in the Feywild is a fun opportunity uh, for DMs. It's a way to kind of stretch different creative muscles. You get to be whimsical in kind of fun and, and interesting ways. And the book, The Wild Beyond the Witchlight, has a lot of tools in there that you can use that kind of show why the Feywild is a different place. So one example is in the Feywild, this plane of emotion responds to the emotion of people that are there. So in the book, there's some guidance of how your surroundings might change based on the disposition of the characters. And so that might then impact the characters themselves. So you have these different tools at your disposal to show how the Feywild is different. Well, that's it for us. Thank you for listening. And I do hope on behalf of our team that you love the Wild Beyond the Witchlight and its satellite products as much as we do. I want to thank everyone who worked on it. A lot of people poured their hearts and souls into this product. And I just want to say thank you all um, for all that you did. And until next time, this is Chris Perkins signing off for the D&D team. Have a good one.